Yes, yes, people. Welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV. City 2, Newcastle 0, out of the FA Cup. Shock, shock, horror on that one. Yeah, who's surprised at that? A pretty routine win for Manchester City. 2 0, and they didn't get off, didn't have to get out of gear to, to be honest with you. Second gear, didn't have to get out of it, and it was very easy for them, wasn't it? And Newcastle didn't do enough tonight. I mean, listen, it's two fluky goals, and it? it's two lucky goals for them, unlucky goals for us to concede. Two deflections is what has cost us in the end. So it's not like we have been hammered, even though you thought at one point it could definitely be that way. But it's two, it's two deflected goals that knocked Newcastle out of the quarter final, and we always knew this was going to be pretty much an impossible task coming up against Manchester City. The one team you really don't want to get, the one draw we really didn't want to get was Man City away. In particular, we got it is what it is, and um, I'm just a bit good tonight because it was the the result we expected, but City weren't that good at all. They didn't have to be, which was annoying. I thought they were good at keeping the ball, and I thought the game management was very good. You know, your, your Kovacic's, your Rodri's and that, are very intelligent, very quality players. But I just don't think they had to do loads tonight, really. And uh, they got two easy goals. Yes, they're deflected. Yes, they're, they're lucky for them. It's unlucky for us. But at the same time, we're just... The defender wasn't good enough for us. You know, we sat off too much. I thought in and around that area, it was coming, that goal... It was time and time again where Dan Burnley had two on one against him. So for that first goal in particular, I think Joe Willick isn't good enough, isn't close enough, isn't quick enough to help Dan Burnley out. And I think tonight showcases how much we miss Joe Linton and him helping out at the back. Um, I think that's blatantly obvious now because Joe Willick, I thought, was was bad in that aspect tonight. You know, he's not helping out defensively. He's not getting back. We're not getting tight. And then Bernardo Silva, we actually when when Willick does get back and we are in the box, he does well to shift Bernardo onto his right foot. He takes a shot on his weak foot and it bounces off Dan Burns' arse and it's one 0 City. And yeah, that just sums up our season, to be fair, doesn't it? Bounces off Dan Burns' arse and it goes in. And that's that's the type of goal where Man City have got some luck there. Man City don't need luck. Man City are world class treble winners. Going to be doing double trebles for the first ever. No one's ever done that, and they're on course for it. Win the Prem Champions League and FA Cup, they could easily do it again, which is ridiculous to say. But they don't need luck. We need luck when you go to places like Man City. You want to be the one that has luck. You want to be the team that gets a nice deflected goal. We didn't have that. You know, we're, we're sitting off Man City, though. I just don't think there was enough intensity or, or drive to get at them in that uh, first half in particular to close them down enough to help each other out and gifting them goals there. And the second one is just as pathetic. We'll just touch on the goals first before getting to my notes on the game and overall feelings afterwards. And I can see the comments are flying in. So I'll get back to what you are seeing in the chat in a bit. But the second goal, it's another deflection. And it's again, it's unlucky. And it's just, it just again, it just sums up how, how uh, bad luck this, this season's been, really, doesn't it? Sven Botman has to take some blame, though. I don't think it's as unlucky as the first one because I think with him, you've got to get, your, get a strong head on that, get it out, or just let it go in, in a sense. And he does, he does a bit of both. He meets it halfway with that one, and it just kind of floats in. And Debraska doesn't do great. To be fair, he kind of jumps over, it goes through his leg. It's a bit comical, and it's and it's two 0 and it's it's pretty much game over in it. Because to be fair, throughout that game, then second half, you're just crying out for us just to do something in the final third, have that bit of quality going forward, and we just never had that because we had half chances, half moments where. There was even when the subs come on and it's two on two or it's three on two and you're looking for that turnover and we just can't materialise anything. We just can't get it going. And obviously the main one's fault, Alexander Izak. First half, he has one. It's a good save from Ortega. But for me, when you're that close out, you have to be scoring that. I think when you are that close, you have to be burying it. He does connect with it quite well, but it's not in the corner enough. It's not in the corner enough. And then City's keeper makes the save. And that's the only real shot on target, I think it was. And... Uh, Second half, you know, as a ball played through to Isaac, terrible first touch, and it goes away. You know, awful first touch, escapes him, and then it's just little bits there. You know, little moments where you need something to go for you. You need to take that little split chance, that half chance. You need to you need to capture that. To be honest, you really do because 
when they're in a 2 0 lead as well, Man City, and they're in control and they're making it look easy. And like I said, they didn't even have to play that well. And that's the frustrating thing with me. I don't think we've been blown away tonight, thankfully, in a sense, because the score pretty early on, you think, oh, God, this could be the four, five, or six that people feared and kind of slash joked about, but didn't really anticipate it because Chelsea put three pass with you. Coming up against City, there was genuine fears that it could have been a thrashing tonight. It wasn't. But I think that was, you know, Man City just didn't really perform to their standards. And, and that's another one where you look and you think, should we have made more of that? Could we have made more of that? Could we have been a bit more dangerous? Could we have threatened more? I think the answer is yes to all that. To be fair, I thought it was really disappointing, to be honest with you. I don't think we gave enough of it, like Eddie Howe said we would. He said, oh, we'll go for it. We'll attack and everything. What was it? One shot on target and about 70% possession to Manchester City. So it wasn't enough. And speaking of that, you know, we'll go five at the back. First time of the season, we'll go five at the back. Tino Livermento was missing. He picked up a ankle injury. No, no um, surprise there after how much he was getting booted all over at Stamford Bridge on Monday night. But he goes off injured. He didn't go off injured at the time, but he is injured now. And he didn't even make the bench tonight. Um, Murphy steps in at, at right back, right wing back, whatever you want to call it, slots in there. And again, it's it's bewildering to me now the whole Dan Byrne thing. And again, I think it's the asphalt is you know Willock not helping them out, people not getting back, but. You're putting Dan Byrne at a fucking seven foot tall big show up against Man City, you know what I mean? Up against the best players in the world, and time and time again, Kyle Walker's getting the space early on. You, you, the goal was coming a million miles if you can literally predict it, and it wasn't hard to. You know, you could see where the danger was. I mean, everyone knows it. Every time we play now, whoever, you know, you've got Trip or Tino on, they get quite an easy game compared to what they should get defensively because everyone just targets Dan Byrne, and rightfully so. I think it's getting to the point now where it's a bit of a piss take for me, this Dan Byrne selection with, with a back five as well. You know, even Botman tonight is terrible again. Some really awkward, awful moments from Sven Botman, especially with obviously the, there was a clearance that he made. He just headed it in Man City, I think, to put it over. But he's not been himself since injury. Just take him out the firing line. Again, same with Sean Longstaff tonight. Hopeless. Up. Even the commentator, when he came off, he was like, oh, Sean Longstaff's been playing. He didn't even realise Longstaff had been having a game. Because he didn't touch a ball, didn't do nout. And when Longstaff does get the ball, he gives it away. Or he just, oh, he's so crap, man. And then obviously he came out in Eddie Howe's press conference, him saying that, oh, he's playing with injections. You know, he's been injured. He's doing his best. And then Miley comes on. He's much better. We know how good Louis Miley is. Eddie's talking, he's 17. You know, he's seven. I don't care if he's 17. I don't care if he's seven. He's going to be better than Sean Longstaff. Play Louis Miley. I think the night, you know, the sub should have been started. And I was... We were there for the Man City game in the Carabao Cup, third round. We made all them subs. Dummett and Kraft at Old Trafford at the back. Louis, Lewis Hall played at Old Trafford, scored. Lewis Hall came on tonight. Really good. I thought he looked good. I thought he was bright. He was enthusiastic. He was getting forward a bit, some nice little touches. He's quick with his feet. Good, tidy footwork. Defensively, he was getting back with his pace. I kind of understand why he, why he doesn't play. Why is he not starting over Dan Byrne after the season that Dan Byrne's had? Lewis Hall couldn't do any worse. Comes on, he does better. I, I really don't understand it. I really don't get it. I think, honestly, there's times like tonight where you make the changes. You stop playing your favourites, Eddie. You stop playing the same players over and over again that you're saying are tired and have been out of form. Dan Bain, Sean Longstaff, Sven Botman. Stop playing them. Give someone else a chance. Craft at centre-back if you want to take Botman out. Obviously, the sellers came back in the night because of the back five. But, you know, you've got Tog on the bench, the left-back. You've got Lewis Hall who comes on left-back. These players need to be starting more games and the other ones need dropped. Do you know what I mean? I think there was Almiron as well. I thought <laughs> I've been a big critic of Almiron. I think you've seen it at night as well. Some decision-making wasn't great. But uh, it was a difference when the substitutes came on. It was way more energy, way more drive, way more determination, looking a bit more of a threat in the final third. And I just think mix things up at night. He's changed the system to back five, but you didn't change the personnel, the same old tired legs that are out of form. So that doesn't help. The, the deflected goals don't help. And then when you get a half chance like Isaac gets and he doesn't take it, that doesn't help either. Um, you go to Man City, you are unbeaten in 38 games now at the Etihad. That's how much of an ask it is. And you don't take your moments and you gift them goals. Then you're in trouble. And it's 2-0. We're out. No Wembley semi-final. Devastating. Uh, a lot of people obviously seeing the season's over now. You know, for me, I'm still going to try and be positive and see if we can get seventh, sixth at a push. 
But with the fixtures we've got, that West Ham game in a couple of weeks' time is absolutely massive because they're just above us. We need to overtake them. You've got uh, games against Spurs, Man U away. So we're playing teams in and around us. I think Brighton still. So the European, the push for Europe is well and truly still on. You know, that race for Europe is still on. So I'm not saying season over because I think we can still get Europa League um, and that worst conference league. But uh, I think it's just a pity the way we went out the night. It was a real pity. It wasn't enough fight. Um, expected. Listen, <laughs> I said in the preview, you know, I went for an optimistic 1-0. But um, we all expect to get beat tonight. Man City, the far superior team to pretty much everyone else in the world. So there's there's no real shame in that. I just think there's shame in the way we give the goals away, not closing down. Unlucky yet, but then again, not doing enough going forward. Well done to the 8,000 Jodies that travelled to Manchester, though, in the pissing down rain. Fair play to them. Unbelievable support, as usual. Um, seeing that from their first goal, the Bernardo Silva, one, I thought Newcastle reacted well. We've seen a bit of the ball while pushing a little bit forward. But again, I think Man City were just sitting off, allowing us to do that. Um, but then the pathetic goal happens with, with Botman just kind of heading it in. Dubravka was raging after that, but I don't think he was that good in that moment. Kind of dived over it, but he's getting no help, is he, from his back lane. With those deflections, just a bit of a shameful goal to concede, to be fair. Very, very poor. Um, he's a chance that could be the turning point. You make that 2-1, it's half time. You never know, because you look at it at eight. Two deflected goals, and now what else really happened? Dubravka made a couple of good saves, especially after the second half from Jeremy Doku. Made a very good save, but it wasn't like City were really peppering our goal or getting battered, you know. it was That wasn't really the case. So if you score one of those moments, Isaac, it could have been different. Probably not, though, to be honest. Probably not. I mentioned Longstaff being bad. I thought Bruno looked tired tonight. He made, you know, he gave away a couple of the, a couple of balls or something. I think he struggled against Rodri's physicality. But, uh, yeah, he looked knackered. Rotten look with the deflections, as we've said. Dan Bain has a chance going forward after brilliant work from Isaac. Isaac's first touch tonight was was bad at a couple of moments, but on this one, he, he laid it off to Dan Bain after some nice play. And Bain tries to play it to Willock, who just wasn't expecting it at all. And it goes out for a, <laughs> for a goal kick, and then Dan Bain just... Close lanes the air defender out, oh, pushes him over in frustration. And it was frustrating because I think Dan Burney, like a confidence clearly, but just hit it. You never know, we'll make it a deflection. If you have a shot, you make it a deflection. Worked out for City, all right, didn't it? So just have a hit, Dan. Have a hit, man, Burn. Similar sort of position where he scored in the uh, Carabao Cup last year as well. Just have a hit in the rain along the ground. Could zip in, could hit off someone, deflection, whatever. Just have a, have a punt, man. And then... On the 61st minute, we make four changes. Eddie Howe making four changes. I couldn't believe my eyes. Miggy, Hall, Anderson and Miley came on for Longstaff, Byrne, Gordon and Willock. I was obviously very pleased with Gordon being fit tonight, but um, never got into the game, which was a shame. I thought Willock was cracked tonight. Dan Byrne and Longstaff. You could say the same thing every week about them too, to be honest with you. Um, Miggy was all right, but again, didn't look like he was going to really cause any damage, which you could say. It's his game, isn't it? You know, lively, energetic, but final third, missing a little bit. Lewis Hall, like I said, I thought he was good. I thought Lewis Hall looked good when he came on. Um, I thought he looked brave, getting forward, neat footwork, and, you know, good defensively, pace to get back. So I want to see more of Hall. I thought Eddie Anderson was a bit shanked as well when he came on, to be honest with you. But the energy was better. We showed a bit more. Um. And then Miggy does actually sort of, sort of criticise his his final touches and stuff in the in the opposition box, but he did he was the one that did play in Isaac, who had a terrible terrible touch. Ball gets away from him. And that at that moment you just think I had it. What was it? Fifty minutes to go at that point you just think I had it. That's the last chance. Ball playing Isaac. If he takes a good first touch, gets his shot off. Two one with ten twenty to go. Who knows? But um, yeah, Latin quality going forward. Man City were in control quite comfortably without really having to do much or get out of second gear, which was a big crying shame. Then Botman went off injured, but for me, he looks like he's been injured since he's been injured. Since he came back from this injury, it's been a difference around Botman. By far and not the same bloke, so he needs time out. Look, let's make him be going to Dubai next week, aren't they? The players are straight from an eighth um, for some warm weather training. Those that aren't in international duty, half of them look like they're on holiday or want a fucking holiday, and half of them look like they need it. So my God. 
that's my thoughts. But Botman, I think, is needs to be taken out the fire lane, just like Sean Longstaff and just like Dan Byrne. These players are well out of form. Fitness concerns for them as well. Um, looking absolutely worn out. And then you've got Lewis Hawker come on. Matty Toggan that could come on. Miley there for Longstaff. Um, maybe LaSalle's will start next time. Like you came in tonight. But I. Anyways, I'm enough of ranting on my opinions on the game. Let's see how you are feeling in the comments. There's a good couple of hundreds of chats to get through, so I'll try and pick out some of the best ones. Please drop a subscribe on the channel if you haven't already, and a thumbs up. Um, right then. Matt, to be fair, made a point before the game. Oh, no, he didn't. Sorry, I thought that was 5.07. But at 7.07, he made a point of Hall, Anderson and Miggy could have started. It's a cup game. Exactly what I said. I would have started the subs. I would have rotated. We've seen how well it did rotate in the team at Old Trafford and against Man City in the Carabao Cup. You know, he's like awful today. I'm not even on the BS tonight, people. Paddy's day tomorrow. Gonna enjoy the Guinness. So on the H2O. Trust me how hard it was not to get in the fridge and get a beer during that game. It really was. Um, yeah, I mean, this is becoming quite. A theme now on, on social media, people are saying this stuff, and I did mention the whole time to drop your favourites thing earlier on in the video, Eddie, because it's get, it's getting too much now. Like I've been sticking up for Eddie Howe, and I still will stick up for him. I'm not going to say he should be sacked or anything madly. I'm not not at all, but that love, like Brent is saying there, for Burn Longstaff, is just, it's just getting out of hand. You've seen it now when the Burn Longstaff go off, Miley and Hall come on, and we're better. And those two individual players played better. And we look better as a team. So, it's just, just, just getting... It's actually really pissing me off now. It really is. Being Mercury will finish 6th or 7th in the league. Well, some critical, really critical fixtures coming up. Non, non more so than the next one after... The international break on the 30th against West Ham here at St. James Park. That's a must win that league. And if we do that, then we'll close the gap and we'll be right up there for 7th, 6th, 7th. But we're doing... It could, turn, uh, it could turn even more hostile. Well, a lot more hostile. Eddie on a P45 soon. See his Gary. Southgate Syndrome. Picking his favourites over the better performance. I painfully... Painfully agree, to be honest with you. Um, that's a good point because the midfield hasn't been there as well hasn't helped team talk report on how might be replaced by Mancini Ugh, tell me about it man fucking you so far forward at times as well and you're just thinking oh I'm losing the will to like continue whinging about Dan Byrne being there or Dan Byrne getting picked, to be honest. I'm actually getting bored of it already. Can we just start fucking playing Lewis Hall? Or Matty Target? Or Matty fucking anybody? Me? Do you know what I mean? Anybody? Right formation, wrong personnel. Goals are a shame. Man City were poor. Oh, of course Man City will get Coventry in the semi-final. Well done to Coventry City, by the way. Beating Premier League Wolves today, 3-2. They're, they're at Wembley. Coventry at Wembley. Fair play. And it'll be a sky blue derby in that one in the semi-final. No doubt Man City will get them. And then it'll be, uh, you'd expect maybe Liverpool and uh, Chelsea of the favourites to, to win. But to be fair, I would quite fancy Chelsea to get beat, to be honest with you. Uh, Newcastle players couldn't be RC as IBS 1998. It's the Northeast connection thing with being a long staff. It's getting boring now. The only we touched on it in the last one. This all North Houston. Obviously, we want Geordie to do well. You know, what I mean, obviously, um, we want Geordie's in the team, not at the expense of others, though. You know, I mean, I'm not going to pick a Geordie just because he's Geordie. I'm going to pick the best player, and that's the way it should be. It's absolutely mental if you're picking players based on fucking birth certificates. That would be nice to be fair. And again, these strikers on the bench tonight. No Wilson. 
would be nice to play Isaac on the left. Man City's goals weren't look, they were self inflicted. Well, I agree because we're not closing them down. That, you know, would give them the chance to get the shot away. We do give them a chance to get the shot away. So we don't help ourselves. We definitely help Man City. But again, it, especially the Bane one, it, it, is, it is unlucky. Like, But at the same time, if we didn't uh, give them that opportunity, I hear what you're saying. Eddie has peaked, says Ian. Poor defendant. Yep, the invisible man on the pitch, Longstaff. When isn't he? When isn't he? Lost the game in the tunnel, said somebody there. It's true, like, you know, I think when you go to these places a lot of the time, I thought in the first half in particular, like, Newcastle players are just looking at Man City in awe. I thought sometimes they just say, oh, that was a nice pass. Longstaff's looking there thinking, oh, hey, I'll tell you what, Roddy's got a nice moustache. You know, what I mean? like, they're just looking there like, oh, that was a nice, no, oh, lovely run, lovely run that forward. No, oh, nice bit of trickery. Oh, look at Holland, he's a big lad, isn't he? Do you mean at times you just think they're looking there? <sighs> looking there in awe at them and uh, giving them too much respect. And we didn't have much belief. I think there was very little belief that we could actually go there and get the job done, especially at 2 0. Second half, you think, go on, just knit a goal, make it interesting, make it exciting, put them under pressure. 8,000 Geordies there, rolling your own. I just think they never thought, like, man, we can't do this. Players didn't look up to his James. Debrafka made some good saves. Man, City didn't have to get, a, get out of second gear. Seeing a lot of people. Tactics were good, just unlucky. Season age. Oh, lads, free to watch the ball instead of putting the tackle in. Right? That's uh, really frustrating when we see that as well, right? especially when it's Man City. I know they're hard. They're a really hard team to get the ball off, but yeah. At times, you know, you can just, instead of just backing off and back, because anybody can back off, especially if I've been shot and eight, it was just like, you may as well not have been there in a sense. So you may as well just had a fucking mannequin there. Controlling with the remote because you're just going backwards and backwards and backwards and just letting them run out. Work. Uh, similar to what I said before, you know, if we lose to West Ham and then that European push is starting to look ever further away and, and the difficulty goes up, then I, I, I agree that, you know, it will get a bit more. Nasty. Bowen and Kudos will have a field day against Bin. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to think about that yet. I'm not thinking about that until until next week, end of next week. Week after. You know what I mean? I'm I'm, I'm buzzing for this international break. I'm absolutely buzzing for it. I normally hate national breaks, but I'm really happy for this one. Really happy just to not have to do this and you know watch Newcastle whinge about Bin and Longstaff for another week. Coventry would have beat us anyways in the semis. <laughs> Because Blackburn nearly did. I tell you what, you never know. Like the way we're fucking playing, get Mourinho in, Mancini coming in, Mourinho Mancini, both linked to Newcastle. <laughs> Clear out needing the summer. Bruno wants to leave. One hundred percent. Andy, out before our big players go. New training ground and medical team required. That would be lovely, that, like. Definitely both. I think it has been great for months, like, has it? Taylor's right there. People are saying uh, season's done. Uh, 
Two shots and 28% possession. Oh. Cabbage heat performance. Some strong comments in the chat tonight regarding that. Fulham two points behind us now. What was their result tonight like? They must have beat Spurs. I think they were winning one and a half time, weren't they? I've seen that. I'm just going to check the Fulham score there now. Uh, friggin' hell. Fulham beat Spurs 3-0. That Rodrigo Munez on fire. He scored a brace. And they are now two points behind us. My God. They're in 12th. We're in 10th. Two points behind us. We've got a game in hand, though. And like I said, if we beat West Ham, we would go 7th. So people are saying the season's over. The season isn't over, like, lads and lasses. The season isn't over. We beat West Ham, we'll go seventh. So depending on what Brighton and Wolves do, like. But, you know, that shows how tight seventh to tenth is. We're seventh to twelfth now with Fulham being there. But, you know, beat West Ham, we'll be seventh. Seventh to ninth. So uh, I wouldn't say the season was over yet. Like, I'm going to still remain positive. Why not? You've got to feel one way, may as well try. But I tell you what. I'll be switching up. If we don't beat West Ham, I'll be switching up. Like then I'll be I'll be gone fucking mental to be honest with you. Um stubborn is the word to describe how. Whole situation is so weird. Honestly, I, th I thought he had some nice little moments, me, especially the first five minutes. I thought, you know, he really progresses well in the opposition half. He has really, really good ball control. He niggles his way out of situations. He looks very lively, head up, looking around for things to happen, playing some zip passes. And then he was always back defensively and always there at corners. You know, Mark and his man, clever reading. And uh, it looks like the player that you'd think would be worth fucking £30 million from Chelsea. That's what he looks like. He looks like this young star that we're meant to buy. The young star the last seen with my very own eyes at Old Trafford score a great goal. So, please stop playing him. Please, please, please stop playing him. Honestly, man. Whoever told you that is a massive bullshit. That is not true at all. I can confirm that is not true at all. So that is some... That was something in, in the new account, that was it? Was that when you find that one on Twitter? Because that is absolute lies. I guarantee that right now. How out tonight in capitals? Nogglesman or Hansi Flick? This is pathetic. Uh, if, I don't know if he's you're not obviously not talking to me, Corbin, because I never in a million years said that. Uh, so just making things up now, unless you were applying to someone in the chat, but I definitely never said. Arsenal would finish with Newcastle because I actually said Newcastle would finish seventh this season because I knew Champions League would affect us and we didn't have the squad for it. I actually predicted seventh at the start of the season. So there you go. Looking pretty uh, on point, isn't it, for that? At a push. Uh... Sad in this point by the season. Yeah, it's been a tough one. It's been a long old tough one. Where things obviously haven't went our way. Everything, well, everything has went against us. Really, the cup draws, the injuries, the Tenali stuff. So uh, it hasn't been easy. Like, thought we played Canny. Says Trev. And Trev, yeah, with another one, you know, saying the gap between City, you know, I had a lot of people reply to our social media because, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, when it comes back along the tick, I can follow on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, the Magpie channel, mainly Instagram is where we're very active, Twitter on a match day. But uh, on there, you know, full time thoughts, and a lot of people are saying that we, the gap is massive, which it obviously is, you know, Man City are treble winners, but in terms of closing them down, 
with the gap's massive, and I don't think it's ever going to happen. To be honest with you, I don't think it can ever happen. When Pep leaves, City will inevitably fall off, and if these charges come through and stuff. But in terms of catching anybody up, Arsenal, Liverpool as well, because of the financial fair play and then that new PSR rule, which we talked about on the podcast the other night, you can go back and listen to that. It just basically benefits teams that are already raking it in. Unless you've already got massive revenue, you can't really spend any money anyway, so it's not helping anyone but the top four. So the gap will always be there, if not get worse. And you're thinking you lose a baton, really. It's kind of pointless in a, in a way, having these rich owners. Now, it doesn't make a, a huge, great deal of difference um, that you'd think it would on paper because in financial fair play, we can't kind of spend it. So, and we can't really generate income overnight, can we? Yes, we've got the IDAS thing coming in and everything else, but you're talking years and years to even get anywhere near, anywhere near them. Uh, good question there from Dan. Do you think FA may be looking at Eddie Howe? I think they definitely would have been last season. I think this season they may have been put off a little bit. But know for a fact that they were last year, and he, he'll definitely be on a shortlist because if Southgate does leave this summer, as expected, you know, his contract runs out and he said he's leaving, that could obviously change depending on what happens in the tournament. Um, but if he does leave, then I think Eddie Howe will be probably top three. For the England job, definitely. I think the FA would look at him and um would target him. I really do. So I don't. They definitely will be looking at him. Whether Eddie would like that, whether that would be good enough for him in terms of you know how much he loves coming to work. He's there all day, every day. Oh, next Steve Bruce. He's there from early to late. You know, he loves the graft with England, with international job, with how he's still being young for a manager. Is he going to really enjoy that? I don't think so. But then again, we know he's a very proud Englishman, and if they offer him an England job, it may be too hard for him to turn down. Or, or he may still be invested in the project, or, or who knows. But FA will definitely be shortlisting anyhow for that job. Um, Got to have trust, says Aaron. Look at Arsenal and Arteta. Very good point and very good similarities, to be fair. I like, remember Mikel Arteta. Finished eighth twice in a row in his first seasons with Arsenal. He did win an FA Cup as well, though, so that helped. But he did have to get rid of a lot of Deadwood and a lot of fringe players and a lot of players that weren't working well for him, the likes of your Bamiyangs and loads of fringe players. So, you know, yeah, he's right there and it will take time. And we do need a massive overhaul this summer. I think you'll see a lot of players leave, like your, your, like your Richies, your Dummits. Karius has said that he wants to leave. So, you know, a lot of squad players, and it was with a lot of change coming this summer. Eddie Howe was asked about that in the press conference the other day. And he said, I'm not sure if we can, but there's got to be, because we're going to lose five or six easily. And you're going to have to replace them. So, but we're also going to have to improve the start 11, because you look at the wingers, you know, your yarn runs and stuff for this world, and your, your long staffs and that. Yeah. Players like that, I know, obviously, Tony will be coming back for long staff, but um, yeah. Lots of upgrading needed. Let's not kid ourselves. We were never in the FA Cup. Well, just uh, one game away from a semi-final, mate. One game away from getting to Wembley. So I would say that was definitely in the FA Cup. Yes, the draw didn't help. Obviously, it's a tough tie. But uh, when you're in the quarterfinals of any tournament... I think you can dream of getting at least to the semi-final because that's uh, one game. So we've had a one. Yes, obviously we'd hope we've got a de decent draw and got someone at home, but 90 minutes away from Wembley, I think that would be considered as a, a cup run or a dream of getting to the FA Cup semi-final or final. Strange vision. Why didn't we get a striker in on loan in January? From you tell me, but we couldn't afford Calvin Phillips in on loan, could we? Which would dodge a bullet there. But obviously, there wasn't many options, but you could see. I was crying out for Mitrovic from Saudi or something, you know? But, uh, yeah. Would it be nice, but it looks like we just couldn't have afforded anybody. David, with some positivity there. Wow, is that all long stuff? I had 19 touches. Fucking hell, man. Just 
Well, we'll cross this bridge, Thomas, if it happens. Do you know what I mean? There's no point in... I can't see the point in being, like, super negative. You know what I mean? <laughs> we could finish 12th, right? We could finish 6th as well. So, how are we going to look at it? I mean, half empty, half full. Mine's about a quarter. But uh, so is Thomas's, by the looks of it. But, you know, we could finish 6th, could finish 12th. Let's, let's reassess at the end of the season. Another one there on long stuff. Not sure if the down burn effort has been raised, but F me, what was that? Has to be dropped for Hall now. Wins a few headers, but nothing going forward. <clears throat> Blue Staffy Bobby's got a message for people here. Short memories. Team has had a horrific season with injuries. The lads are doing their best. Overachieved massively last season. You all need a reality check. We are not a top four team yet. That's used told. <laughs> now, do, do you know what it is? I'm, I'm on the fence with both of them I understand people's frustrations but I, I also agree with some of that you know the, the season has been awful with injuries with the cup draws with Tenali, um, and we did overachieve we weren't, we weren't Champions League ready at all we weren't a Champions League site at all the summer recruitment last year didn't help didn't improve us with full backs that can't get a game and, and Bond that's been injured all the time um, and we're not a top 14 we're barely a top 16 to be honest with you I think seven's about right when you look at teams in and around us. Look at West Ham with their team and how well they've been doing for years. You've got Spurs now in there, Aston Villa. So we should be in amongst the mix, but I don't think we're like guaranteed to be there. And yeah, we're nowhere near, nowhere near top four. Um, so I, I like that from Calix and I agree with it. Any form of European football is is a success for me. Like that's a realistic goal. And I think people might have got spoilt too soon with Champions League, maybe. But uh, I, I do think that is a, a realistic goal. I honestly, mate, I honestly can't keep me uh, get my head around it. To be honest with you, I just think it's because of how well the defence did last year, and obviously people are coming in the comments as well with the same favouritism, so, uh, you know, Southgate syndrome, Eddie Howe picking his best pals, and that. I just, I just think it's because Eddie Howe trusts them too much because of after last year. He trusts Dan, Dan Burn too much. He trusts that back line. You've got to think it's... Look, we've been exposed with the, the, the goals we conceded this season. It's time to wake up. Quit living in the past. Quit thinking about last year. Realise what's happening in front of us now. And Lewis Hall's a better player. Well, he looks like it anyways. We need to see more of him. When he's come on, like you said there, in, in the cup against my United and stuff, he has looked class. He has looked better. And Dan Burn's been having a mare for months. So he can't be any worse. He, he can't be any worse. Can he? Because if he was... It would just be the same thing where, oh, Lewis Hall's been out of position there. Oh, Lewis Hall's been done. You'd just be replacing the, the word Lewis Hall with Dan Bain. You know what I mean? So I don't think he could do any worse. So I think it's bonkers that he doesn't get picked. We know he's young. I was said, you know, oh, it's because we need to train him up more defensively. Um, but <laughs> we need to train Dan Bain up more defensively this year. Do you know what I mean? The amount of mistakes he's making and that and the positions he gets himself in. Yes, he hasn't been held at times by the midfield and the protection's not there like it was last year with Joe Linton and that, but... Honestly, Scott, I couldn't tell you. That's what I think it is. Just them being, uh, being lying and trusting, being that for too much like you did last year. Um, Will said before I missed it. Instead of Dubai, should have gone to New Big and by the Sea. <laughs> they didn't deserve to go to New Big and by the Sea. I'll tell you that they didn't deserve it. Uh, shout out William Walsh for becoming a member. We'll be revealing on an, on a video next week. This month's uh, giveaway. So every month we do a giveaway. Sometimes it's a, um, like a football frame of Newcastle players at the stadium or it's some sort of merch or it's a, a war beer it's been, creates a war beer and stuff. So there's plenty of different um, prizes that we give away each month. I saw giving away tickets at this point. Not going to hell. 
Tell you what, it's worse than unfortunate news. So yeah, you can become a member by clicking the join button or hitting the link in the description. Right then, let me try and get back over the comments that I was at before because I just wanted to highlight will becoming a member. Cheers for that, mate. Um, where are we at then? Here we go. Just about getting there again. Remember how Alex Ferguson started? Some fans want instant success. It takes years. It certainly does. You know what's painful, though? Every time we're on TV in the cup and they show the black and white images from 1955 and it sinks in again just how long it's been without a trophy. My God. It's so painful and embarrassing. 55 since the domestic trophy, man. 69 since the first cup. That's why I just... Look at my name, man. Now they're, now, they're, now they're not even bothered about... On the day, they were a little bit happy. Yeah, we got a trophy in the Ten Hag when they won the Carabao Cup instead of us last year. Now they've just forgotten about it. Now it means nothing to them because they've won big titles. Um, that's how much we needed that. Just I needed that Carabao Cup in the final last year, man. Fuck's sake. If we had have won that, just to get that... Uh, get the old monkey off your back. God help England if they do take any. Men against boys tonight. <clears throat> Nogglesman in. Since somebody else there. Nogglesman or Hansi Flick will be first choice for me. She's your nightmare. Last season's fourth finish has clouded perceptions of where we should be. We lost to Man City, the world's best team. You're not wrong there. I'll agree with you on that one. The special one is still on the door, says Bern. Just overspend and take the 10 point deduction. It'd be fucking worth it at this point. I'd take fucking splashing the cash in the summer lake and get a 10 point deduction and just kind of, yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Hold the quality. Well said, Craig. I think that summed it up very nice. I love Dan Byrne as well, more so last season. But, you know, I love him, respect him so much. He was unbelievable last year. He's lived every Geordie's dream. Scored in the Gallagher, like you've said there. Scored in some big games, you know, Carabao Cup to get us to the final. Now it's time to just be a squad player. Now it's time to get out. Because even he said he couldn't believe when Newcastle called him. He thought his chance was gone. When the takeover happened, he thought, I'm definitely never going to play for them now. They'll be signing some quality players. So even he was shocked. And I think last year he really did perform out of his skin. You know, really relishing being in a in a boyhood club and you know wearing that Newcastle badge with prey. But now it's the time. Now is the time to accept the fate. Eddie needs to move him as a squad player. You need to bring in your Lewis Halls and get the ball rolling and get this club moving forward. Because the, the the days of your Dan Burns and that we need to move on now, man. We need to move on. Very good point, and I agree. I agree. You know, if we went in the Europa League, we'd have a good chance. There's still some really good teams in the Europa League. You know, I think a lot of people take the piss out of it. But if you look at the draw the other day, some really big teams in that quarterfinal draw. Um, but I think we could still be in the mix with it. I really do. Right, and people, I'm catch about catching up the comments. We'll go on for another five minutes or so. So get your last bit of crack in the chat there. Uh, The club hope Tino's injury is in serious, by the way, but no time scale given. After he hurt his ankle after the Chelsea game. Another comment there on a uh, Hall over Burn. Right then.
What's this? Would you have John Joe back on a free to put in the reserves and Rafa back in the back rooms? No, I wouldn't like. If we're having to bring back John Joe Shelby and Rafa Benitez, then times must be fucking hard. I did, I it was embarrassing, especially at one point where <laughs> was it a kanji and someone else were just doing one twos for about 30 seconds. I thought, oh well, we're getting the piss taken clean out here, like we are really getting the piss taken out of us. But at that point, I think the players are just spent and they know that I'm not gonna score two goals in the last five minutes. We could still be playing now. We could still be playing Glafian National Break, wouldn't score two fucking goals. Good point by David there saying, you know. Uh, Hall can't get better. He didn't get match minutes. Absolutely. No pan B ever get Mourinho in end of the season. Guaranteed a trophy. <clears throat> How does uh, Longstaff get in the team? He had Neil Rangers as a free agent. I'd take him over Longstaff. <laughs> you know. Shout out Brent for becoming a member as well. Nice one, mate. Thank you. Keep your eyes peeled. They'll also they'll always go in the members post as well, the giveaway. So if you miss miss it when I announce it on social media or I announce it on a YouTube video, we'll always do a community post. Uh, just basically saying comment below for a chance to win whatever that prize is. Uh, Wilson one way ticket to Saudi. Injury FC. Um. Truly awful performance. So predictable, says Alan. Thought 4 0, so 2 0 wasn't as bad. I want the season to end now. Sick of this. Possibly Minta, but none of the other two. Um, Ashby's not going to get in ahead of Tino and Trip Yerzy, and uh, Grant Kual is not even getting minutes in Australia at the minute. So he's having a stinker. An absolute stinker. May as well give Rafa a chance. Mate, he's just been sacked as Salta Vigo manager. He got Salta Vigo 17th in the Liga. I don't even want fucking Rafa Benitez back, man. Who would be your realistic signing next season, Matt? Says guns and blazing. Realistic, mate. What what budget are we working with here? What, I don't know what realistic is anymore. How much money are we going to have to spend? Um, phew. Realistic. Honestly, I don't know anymore. See, for me, and I said it ages ago now, I wanted like a Victor Boniface up front to compete with Isaac. E Maybe you could put Isaac out wide, Boniface down the middle. Is that realistic now? I don't know. Patrick Schick, obviously up by Leverkusen. We've been linked with him for years, tracking him, scouting him. We could bring him in because I think you want a new challenge from the Bundesliga. I think you could taste him to come to the Premier League, but I'm going to have the money for that. Obviously, it's going to help. I think by Leverkusen fans will be gutted because this summer a lot of players would be leaving with Xavi Lonzo, the manager. So if you had the money, you could get someone like that in. But, oh, man. A winger as well is what's desperately needed. Desperately need a winger for me. Uh, the glasses are from Specsavers, mate. So there you go. I had quite a few emails about these glasses. People want to know where they were from, like. So I should be on a fucking commission, yeah? Uh, so... Right. All right. Last couple of comments, people, before we say now on this Saturday night. Nice one for that, Asif. Uh, City fan, a lot of respect for Newcastle. You guys are a great fan base. Shout out Ant Live City fan there. Acknowledging the 8,000 Geordies sounded amazing tonight on, on TV. No, we couldn't get Xabi Alonso as man. Just someone asking there because he's going to go to Liverpool or Bayern Munich. <laughs> he's actually should have went to Specsavers with that shot. He should have, like. Any worries, Ad? You're welcome, mate. Thank you. Uh, right then. Sack the season off. I'll give John. <laughs> 
if Warnock the job. Hey, hey. I think that's a good note to end on, isn't it? Eh? Neil Warnock at the tune. Bloody hell. Well, there we go then, people. Another year. Another year without a trophy. Another trophyless year. Will we ever see one? <laughs> oh, God. Sell our cup, actually. Let's not forget the sell our cup, eh? Trophy this year, what we're talking about? We're going to have to try and take a piss, otherwise I'll cry. Another year without a trophy, man. One game away from Wembley again, semi-final. Fuck's sake. If only we hadn't got City, we would have had a bit of hope. But then again, listen, look what Coventry did the day. They beat a Wolves team who's in, the, in and amongst where we are in the league, so there's no to say that Coventry could have caused an upset against us. Bloody uh, Blackburn nearly did in the last round, to be fair. But there we go. I know there's a lot of doom and gloom and eight were out the cup and everything, but at the same time, we're still in the hunt for Europa League for me. So the season isn't over yet, people. Let's try and make something out of it. All right. Cheers for watching, everyone. Subscribe to my channel TV. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy Paddy's day if you're celebrating that tomorrow. If not, enjoy your Sunday. Peaceful Sunday. And enjoy the international break. We need it. Nice one, everyone. Thanks very much. See you later.